All right, this is just a fun little extra before we submit our work to Photobucket. And some of you might come back to this video over and over again. I'm going to call it making your own icons, right? Making your own desktop icons. This could be for phone icons. This can be for anything. So we took our PNG, and we used our PNG because it has no background. Right? So it's a free-floating shape, like an emoticon, right? This is how you can make emoticons, too. And then we shrunk it using image size within preview to 450 pixels wide. Then we selected all of it by saying Command A, and then we copied it to the clipboard by hitting Command C, right? You can find all those commands under Edit. Now we're going to close it. Now remember, Preview automatically saves. So that's why we saved it as a copy. Now just notice, if you will, that these two look identical, except they are not. If I go to Get Info, this one is 15.7 megabytes because it's a much bigger image. This is made to be print quality. You know, not bigger than 8 by 10 inches at 350 pixels per inch. Whereas this one, the copy that I just resized, it looks very, very similar, right? But it's only 295 kilobytes. So why did we copy it first? Well, because we can make a new folder. And this is going to be your master class folder. And I would like you all to label your master class folders with this format so they're easy to find if they get misplaced. Capital S, capital P, one, nine, space. The name that you are called in the class. Then your last name as registered. And then capital D, capital I, capital, capital G, right? So it's stands for Spring 2019, Your Name, Digital Art. Okay. So that is our master folder, but that folder icon so boring. So we're going to replace it with your, your PNG cartoon jumble. To do that, we go back to that Git Info screen, but to our empty folder, which is zero items, zero bytes. And to replace the icon, you click on it, in the upper left-hand corner of the Get Info screen, and you'll see that it will highlight blue. That allows you to then paste on a new icon, which is Command V or Edit Paste. And so now I've replaced it with my cartoon jumble. So that's my master folder. Now, what if I wanted it to be bigger? Right? How could I do that? To make it as a bigger icon, I have to double click on my original PNG, and I actually should open it up in Photoshop and crop to it as closely as I can without cutting any of it off. And this is how you can do that. If you use your move tool and you click on your ruler, if you don't have rulers, hit Command R, click on the ruler and drag it, and it should stop right at the edge of your pixels. So in this case, at the edge of my drop shadow, it will stop. With those guidelines, I can use the crop tool, and the crop tool will stick to my guides. Then I hit return. This makes the PNG appear as large as possible, right? Because even empty space in Photoshop takes up memory. Now I can resave my PNG. Save as to the desktop, a PNG, replace the original one. Okay. And this way I get to show you how to make an icon all over again. Okay, so now I have that original PNG. Its icon hasn't updated yet, but if you look at it, it looks the same. Um, now I'm going to duplicate that. And because this is the second copy, its name is now copy2 at the end. Open that up in preview. Go to tools, adjust size, change its pixels to 450. I'm expecting it to kind of collapse down and look more like that. wonder if I copied it before it fully saved. Let me check.
Yeah, I did. Okay. So the problem with PNGs is that they uh, sometimes take longer to save. That's one of their main ways, especially in Photoshop for some reason, one of their main ways of compressing without um, losing too much image quality is taking longer to save. So now that it's, I'm just gonna do that same thing again. Go to preview and you see how it looks much closer cropped, right? I haven't lost any image information, but the empty space is no longer part of the PNG. So now I go to tools, go to adjust size and change it to 450 pixels and say, okay. And now command A to select command C, but now it will be a bigger icon at 450 pixels because empty space is not part of that 450 pixels. Then I can close it, it will automatically save. And then I can go back to my folder, click on the icon under the Git Info screen and paste it in. And you see, that's gonna be as big as I can make the icon. And it will take a little bit for that to reflect because I just had changed it already. If I hit delete, I'll just get back to the folder icon if I wanna do it again. Go to Git Info, click on the folder icon in the upper left, and then paste in your icon. And then you'll see it at full size. All right. So I'm going to relabel this my icon, uh, I don't know, avatar, whatever. And then I'm going to delete these. And because I have my PSD, I can always output a new PNG for the class, right? This is before it was shrunken, right? So I'm going to say save as Eman PNG, just to make sure I'm going to add a new title. So I can tell it apart and then I can see it right there. So you want your PSD file with all its layers. You want your JPEG file that's just black and white in a rectangle that you think looks nice, that's filled with white. And you want your PNG looking like that. Now, if, if you don't like how transparent your cartoon jumbo looks, I can always go and add a new type of uh, layer style to it. I'm gonna give myself just a little bit more canvas size. I'm gonna make it nine by nine inches. Okay, and now I'm going to double click and I'm going to add a stroke around it. Because sometimes when you make a file with no background, with no white background, it's like a t-shirt design, right? Whatever color the t-shirt is, it's gonna really affect how that image looks. By adding a stroke around it, you're gonna help it show up. And I'm gonna add actually a white stroke. So this is an outline around all of my lines. And I can decide on the thickness. So that's gonna really help it show up on blue. If I fill up a new layer just to show you with gray and then put it behind, it will show up that way, right? So that's one way to help it show up as an icon a little bit better. And it can also show you little uh, stray pixels you might have in your image. Because even though if they're one pixel, it's gonna put a stroke around them. Whoops. All right, so now, same thing. I'm gonna save it. It's my PNG free floating, no background turned on. And then last time, this is all about making a desktop icons. It's repeating the same steps over and over. I can then take that. Now it has a white stroke around it, right? I can shrink it, adjust size to 450 pixels. I can select it all, copy it, go to my folder, go to Git Info, 
first delete the old one and then paste in the new one. And now it's got that white around it. It feels a little bit more like this, this massive energy blast. But either way, it will be very identifiable to whatever you need. Uh, I, I recommend white for going on, you know, middle to, to darker backgrounds, which is true of most websites. So when we do t-shirt designs, we'll call this an offset. Generally, you want to include that because if it goes on a white shirt, you never see it. But if it goes on a darker shirt, it's very helpful to show off your line work. All right. So now, finally, we go to the class photo bucket page. We navigate through the library to Digital Art 1, drop down, to Digital 1 Exercises, drop down, to Exercise 1 Cartoon Jumble. You're going to put your assignments here, right? Now, because I'm not a student, I'm the instructor, I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to put my assignment in the Instructor Demonstrations folder here. And I already have some stuff there, but you do it the same way. This is what you're going to upload. You're going to drag your, your JPEG in. That's the main thing. And if that's all you have, that meets the requirements of the exercise, right? But it can be fun to see what else you do. Remember, that was fewer than five megabytes. Then, if you have a PNG, the full-size PNG, not the copy, you can drag that in as well. And they'll show up. And a lot of people will be doing it at once, and they'll all come in there. So how do you label yours as your own? Think of it as an exhibit now. It's a virtual exhibit space, so you have to label your work. So click on it. And then underneath, you click to add a title. And just like we did your master uh, folder for the class, we have a way I would like you to format your titles this semester. Always with a capital S, a capital P, a 1, 9. So you're telling me that this is spring semester 2019. Then a space. And then you just need your first name, the name you are called. right? But when you are submitting more than one piece, I want you to number them. So this is SP19 Carl space 1. Because I want to see your black and white first. I want everyone to have a black and white version. And then you do the check mark, and then that label shows up. And then the next one, I'm going to put in as SP19 space Carl space 2. And because I organize all these folders based on the title, no matter how many people submit, that will keep your work together in the right order. Right. And so as they start coming in, when you title them, it will bring them together. By making your black and white labeled number one and your colored PNG as number two, that will put the black and white in front of your PNG. And you see this, this slightly creamish color you see behind these? That means that they're transparent, that you did that right. But the JPEGs will be solid white behind. All right. So this will be submitting our first assignment. I'm going to come around and help you with that, and then we'll critique them uh, once we have them in.